Hi everybody, so here we are, part two of cell respiration, and in this one we're going to spend some time focusing on uh, the last two pieces of aerobic respiration, um, so what follows glycolysis uh, into the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, so here we go. Um, so this should seem familiar. We looked at this on the last podcast. This is the overall view of aerobic respiration. That's the key. Aerobic, which means it is using oxygen. And we'll get to the oxygen. That piece comes at the very end. So as I had just a quick review, um, we have C6H12O6 plus oxygen is going to give us CO2 and water, okay? So that's the actual overall equation of cell respiration. So we're gonna focus here on where our products come in, you know, where our products come out of this process, where our uh, reactants go in. So we know at the very beginning in glycolysis, glucose is used, okay? And this is where we are gonna spend ourselves a little ATP um, to break apart the glucose into pyruvate. So we create two pyruvate molecules out of our six carbon molecule. This is a three carbon molecule. We get out of it four ATPs, um, but as a result of having used two, we only net two of them. This is occurring in the cytoplasm of the cell, and from here we're gonna move into the mitochondria itself. Now, from here we've got a couple of prep steps that are gonna happen. Uh, keeping in mind that even in the prep step, we are gonna create some cofactors. So we create NADH, and then in Krebs cycle, we're gonna create all of these. And we'll talk about the amounts here in a minute. Krebs cycle, all about these guys, making those. Krebs cycle is where we're gonna be spitting out our carbon dioxides. We're actually gonna make a little ATP here too, but we're gonna split out the CO2s. Once we create our cofactors, we're gonna um, allow those cofactors to donate their electrons to the ETS. This is occurring along in the membrane of the cristae of the mitochondria. Um, those electrons are gonna bounce through um, to set up a concentration gradient of hydrogen ions that eventually are gonna make all of our ATP. So cha-ching there. Um, and at the end of it all, is our other reactant of this process, oxygen, that is just gonna catch all of those electrons and combine with water, or combine with the hydrogen ions, I should say. So the electrons, the hydrogen ions, the oxygen, and voila, there's our other product. So let's take a closer look at the Krebs cycle. This is where we enter into the mitochondria. Um, I wanna comment that there is the pyruvate prep step uh, if you look at the biology coloring book handout, um, if you need to pause and grab it, do so. But the biology coloring book handout shows these prep steps where we're gonna take pyruvate uh, and we're going to convert it by adding the CoA um, to create acetyl-CoA. Pyruvate turns into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is what's going to enter into Krebs cycle. And just like in Calvin Benson, it's a cyclic reaction with a number of intermediates and a number of different things going on. Okay, so here, once we get our acetyl-CoA coming in, uh, we're gonna get it transformed into citrate that's also citric acid. That's why this is also sometimes referred to as the citric acid cycle. Um, it has a few intermediates as we go down. You'll notice down here is where we begin to create the first cofactor of the Krebs cycle, NADH, uh, by reducing it, at the same time spitting out our first product, carbon dioxide, okay? Now, same thing, next intermediate, we're gonna create our NADH, okay? We're gonna kick out our other CO2, heading it around, build up an ATP molecule here, create another cofactor called FADH2, swinging it through, NADH gets made again, and we're back to oxaloacetate, which comes in to meet up with the next acetyl-CoA that's entering the cycle. Bearing in mind, one glucose molecule creates two pyruvates, so this cycle is actually happening and everything that we're creating off that one glucose is happening two times. So I've got for that one glucose molecule that I've split, two Krebs cycles happening, all of what you're seeing here is actually being doubled, okay? So I'm gonna wrap this all up at the end, so fear not. 
Okay, so take a quick peek. You also have a lovely um, diagram in chapter eight of your textbook as well. Once we have created all of our cofactors, we're gonna enter into the third and final piece of cell respiration, which is the electron transport system um, and ultimately electron transport phosphorylation. This is gonna happen in the folds, in the membranes um, of the mitochondria. That's why there's all these folds going on on the inside. The more surface area of membrane we have, the more available proteins we have for this process. So these, these buggers here are just shoved throughout the membrane of the mitochondria. Once we get all of our NADHs here and if you go back you can see how many we had so the NADHs are utilized here okay the NADH donates its electrons same thing with the FADH2 donates its electrons now the hydrogens that are created here okay are used to help build up on hydrogen ion concentration by running through these proteins so they get pushed across the membrane onto the other side, building up a huge hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion con All right, so this hydrogen ion concentration is large. And why we're gonna set up this huge concentration is because also throughout this entire membrane is ATP synthase. All right, and my ATP synthase requires hydrogen ions to pass through them in order to drive the production of the ATP. So if I don't have that hydrogen ion concentration gradient, I won't create ATP as a result. So we build up this really, really nice concentration so that all of these hydrogen ions will flood through, okay? So here's the thing. What happens then to those hydrogen ions that come through? Okay, number of things are gonna happen to them. One, they may combine with the oxygen. Oxygen, shows up really little here, but oxygen is a very important. Here's where that reactant plays its role. As the electrons are bing and banging through the um, system, at the end of it all, those spent electrons plus some hydrogen get attached together and we create water, okay? So these electrons here, they are being used and like, a I mentioned, you know, oxygen's there ready to catch them. Um, and it combines with hydrogen ions as well, and voila, we get water. Um, and as a result, all these hydrogen ions, lots of ATP synthase, lots of ATP molecules being made. So to sum it all up, <laughs> here we are. Glycolysis, out in the cytoplasm, once again, we are gonna put into the system one glucose molecule and two ATP molecules come in and we get through the intermediates of two PGALs, we ultimately create two pyruvate molecules. These two pyruvate molecules, um, in the production of that also, we get the creation of um, some NADH as well, okay? And we get two of those. So we produce that. Then my pyruvates enter into the mitochondria, into the folds, and this is my prep step here and here is where I'm gonna create from those pyruvates acetyl-CoA. In the process of creating acetyl-CoA, I spit out okay, carbon dioxide, and I've got two of those. So let's keep track of our carbon dioxides. I got two carbon dioxides there. Then my acetyl-CoA enters Krebs, okay? Remembering that I have two of them, so just to always keep in mind, this isn't just one of these for every glucose, there are two of them. Krebs cycle, we head around as the Krebs cycle turns, okay? As it's going around, what are we spitting out? We're spitting out NADHs, we're spitting out FADH2. This is showing the total amount, total amount of these. We're spitting out four carbon dioxides. So there's my four carbon dioxides I have now released, okay? Two plus four equals six, and that is what you get at the end of it. You have spit out six carbon dioxides. I've also produced two ATPs. Okay, so here I'm netting two ATP. Here I have two ATP. So let's see, two plus two ATP. We'll keep track of our totals. And then all of my electrons from my cofactors, okay, get released and they're gonna head through the electron transport system, creating my high hydrogen ion concentration out here 
which then zip back through. So they're all going to go out and then come back in through ATP synthase. And as they're coming through ATP synthase, they are forming ATP. Okay. Now, generally, we get about 32 of those from the ETS, leaving me with a grand total of 36 ATP molecules created from the one glucose. So aerobic, a little bit more efficient than anaerobic. We create a whole lot more collectively. And just to stress, we will cover this um, and go over this collectively together in class. Um, but to give you an overview of what it's all about, um, the best thing I can tell you is to take it piece by piece. Um, utilize your resources and, you know, as we work through our flow chart and create it, it will begin to make sense. So um, if you have questions, uh, be sure to jot them down so we can have our discussion about them. Um, and I really think that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll certainly make some sense of them. So enjoy your night, you guys. That's where we're going to end it for today. And uh, we will uh, figure all this stuff out collectively together. Um, but uh, here it is. Uh, this is it. This is what happens when you burn just one glucose molecule. Uh, this is the process it takes to go from that single molecule uh, to the very end. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to say good night and take it easy.